the ability of power systems to maintain stability and to ensure continuous supply of electrical power to customers in the event of a disturbance is of critical importance. As the power system is spread over large geographies, the probability of facing different types of fault and failures is high. Therefore, modern power systems must be equipped with suitable control and protection schemes in order to cope with disturbances. In an effort towards maintaining power system stability, gapless metal oxide based line surge arrestor was introduced in 1988 by Hubble Power Systems. For past two decades, line arrestor was like a silent sentinel protecting the transmission lines from lightning surges. From my previous video, you must have known the construction operation advantages and disadvantages of both non-gap line arrestor and externally gap line arrestor. Link of the previous video is in the description. Based on the feedback received on that video, I am making this new video discussing on the externally gap line arrestor spark gap calculation. Hi, my name is Shatadal Das. Today we will try to explore how to select the size of the gap of an externally gap line arrestor. Traditionally, transmission line reliability is improved by implementing various methods like overhead shield wire, improving shield wire angle, increasing line insulation, and improving grounding resistance. But implementation of line surge arrestor greatly improves the line performance. This graph plotted for line flashover rate against tower footing resistance. Presence of line surge arrestor on 2 out of 6 conductors has reduced the flashover rate drastically. So now, since it is clear that the presence of a line surge arrestor improves the line performance, let's move to the main topic. As discussed in earlier video, EGLA has two sections. The first one is series varistor unit or SVU and the second one is series spark gap. The SVU is rated for nominal line to ground voltage which means after the surge event when the normal system voltage is restored the SVU should interrupt the follow on current. Then we have the spark gap which is rated as per critical flashover voltage of insulator which means before the insulator flashes over the spark gap should flash over. It is important to be noted that the EGLA is designed to operate for fast front surges and they don't have any duty for slow front surges or power frequency over voltages. So the spark gap should be large enough for not to operate for switching or power frequency over voltage but it should be small enough to operate for lightning over voltages. The spark gap of an EGLA is critical in switching on the arrestor unit. Now we must find what is the minimum spark gap distance. The minimum spark gap distance is set to 20% higher than the maximum expected temporary over voltage of the system. This is the critical flashover voltage for power frequency level. Now the typical TOV factors are here. For getting the spark over voltage, another factor U50 or 50% flashover voltage is used. This factor considers rod plane spark gap. It can be termed as U50 RP instead of just U50. The reason for using rod plane gap is it has the lowest withstand voltage compared to all other electrode configuration. Replace the U50 RP with CFO and rearranging the equation gives us the minimum spark gap distance. It is also important to note three things. The first being the peak value of CFO under AC 
is 20 to 30 percent higher than the corresponding value under positive switching impulse voltage. The second being the effect of rain is negligible for this electrode configuration. And the third being the formula is valid for gap up to 1 meter clearance. A term gap factor plays a role for spark gap beyond 2 meters. Now let's find what is the maximum spark gap distance. The first step is to find the 50% impulse flashover voltage of insulator. Once that value is known, then the critical flashover voltage of the spark gap is calculated as 85% of critical flashover voltage of insulator. For simplicity, we will take the BIL as the CFO of insulator. Now, from various electrode configuration, rod plane configuration has the lowest flashover voltage. So, the CFO insulator shall be converted to COFO insulator in rod plane configuration. Now, this is the gap factor for switching impulse. For getting gap factor for lightning impulse, the following formula is recommended. So, the 50% impulse flashover voltage for rod plane configuration is this. Generally, it is accepted that impulse breakdown voltage of air is 15 kV per feet at standard temperature and pressure. Reconfiguring all the above formulas, the maximum spark gap is CFO insulator multiplied with 0.85 divided by gap factor and impulse breakdown voltage of air. These are some of the gap factor for converting rod plane electrode configuration to other electrode configuration. Now let's see an example. Let's take system voltage of 150 kV. It will have high system voltage of 170 kV. So the rated voltage of the SVU will be 98 kV. The critical flashover voltage at power frequency level will be 233 kV. For that, the minimum spark gap distance will be 510 millimeters. For the same system, the BIL will be 750 kV peak. Considering rod-rod electrode configuration, the gap factor will be 1.3. Now, the maximum spark gap distance will be 830 millimeter. The spark gap has to be within 511 millimeter and 830 millimeter. The recommended gap is average of minimum gap and maximum gap, which comes to be 670 millimeter. The tolerance on the spark gap spacing will be recommended gap minus the minimum gap distance which comes to be 160 millimeter let's check what is the spark over voltage compared against the system bil and system tov with 670 mm as the nominal value of spark gap the lightning impulse spark over voltage is calculated as 396 kb peak for this design the spark gap has minimum 53% protection margin compared against the system BIL. Now let's check how much margin the spark gap has against the system TOV. For 670mm spark gap, the spark voltage is calculated as 311 kV, which is 33% higher than the maximum system TOV. So, the EGLA will always offer protection to lightning over voltage and will not trigger to temporary over voltages. I want to add one more thing that the altitude correction factor can also be introduced for site at higher altitudes. So we have come to the end of this video. I hope this video was informative. Please like this video. Tell me in the comment section how did you felt about this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.